Hello my friend, welcome to my studio. In this video I'm going to show you how I used to paint uh, using oils, uh, painting from life. My painting process has evolved over the years and this is the basic one that I used to have when I tried to learn realistic oil painting techniques. I did a small study in my sketchbook and then I began uh, sketching the same still life on canvas using wine charcoal. It erases very easily. And this is the easiest way of uh, sketching a still life right onto uh, your canvas. Basically you don't do a preliminary drawing that you uh, transfer on canvas or panel. You just uh, go in to it and start sketching your still life using wine charcoal. When the sketch is finished, the uh, next step is to dilute oil paint and start sketching with the brush. So I usually use a single uh, color. Here it's burnt umber because it gives me a very nice a warm brown undertone and I usually dilute it with a little bit of gamzal. This speeds up the drying time and it also makes the paint very transparent. I usually use a large synthetic brush and my preference is filbert brush because I can get different kinds of strokes using a single brush. Uh, the size of the brush depends on the canvas size. If it's 16 by 20, I usually use 8 or 10. Um, the size of the brush is 8 or 10. Next, I do some lifting out with a paper towel. The paper towel must be this blue one because it doesn't leave any uh, fibers on canvas. It also makes you know paint on canvas look more even and unified. I don't uh, do any highlights or midtones. I'm basically fixed on the drawing itself using a very limited. Um, value range. In my next steps I will be doing uh, a wider value range uh, highlights and transitions. It's not the case here because I just want to fix the drawing first. All I'm doing I'm getting rid of white uh, canvas uh, filling it in with paint completely. What's important is to leave all the edges nice and soft, uh, softer than you think, because it's a lot easier to make a harder edge over the softer ones, but it's very difficult to fix a, you know, a hard edge later on. If you keep all the edges sharp, it doesn't look natural. There are very few sharp edges to bring something into focus and everything else needs to be nice and soft. So this is a very early stage, you know, the underpainting, so I don't need uh, sharp edges at all. Uh, light is coming from the left and it's passing through the shapes. That's why I didn't fill in the left side and left it pure white for now. I basically focused on the shadows and left uh, the highest lights untouched for now. I put more brown paint, burnt umber, into the darkest areas of the painting and then I diluted the paint uh, some more uh, to paint light values using the same paint. These are the areas that make the transitions into the light. Of course it looks super rough because it's uh, the film underpainting. I wait till this layer dries out completely and then I begin painting in full color. I start painting from the background. I am creating a little bit of texture in the background uh, painting wet on wet because this way the edges stay soft. I don't need to soften them additionally. At the end of my painting sessions, I always use a big soft brush to blend the areas. 
um, and I'm gonna do this later on. And to fill in the background, I am using a range of browns with an addition of some cadmium red and uh, alizarin crimson. These colors uh, vary in color temperature and value a lot depending on a brand. And then I mix uh, a little bit of gray with a touch of brown and begin filling in the box. Color mixing is intuitive and actually quite easy when I'm painting from life. I don't need to think about what colors to mix because I basically take the color and then I try to match to what I see and it seems to be more alive whenever I paint from life as opposed to uh, painting from a picture when I'm trying to uh, mix and mix those colors and match them to the picture but it, it is a picture it doesn't represent the colors that we see in real life and that's a very big difference uh, for the artist that's why it's so so very important to paint uh, from life a lot and then when you learn uh, the skill, then you can start painting from pictures, but not in reverse. Pay attention to the brush direction or the stroke uh, direction, because as you can see, sometimes I'm using up and down stroke and other times I'm using horizontal strokes to describe the form. It depends on the object and its rotation in space. This is like really important. I begin the first color pass uh, working on the face. I fill in the shadows in grays and then I keep adding a little bit of color into the gray uh, to create this colorful gray. And then I keep remembering that one side of the face is a lot lighter than the other side. This concludes uh, the, the first color pass and I'm letting everything dry completely. It usually takes two, three days if it's not a thick paint and then I can go back and start refining shapes and colors uh, using a little bit of linseed oil. Let's go veronicasart.com to see current uh, video courses and tutorials and demonstrations. Okay, and here's the fun part. I begin painting the mirror from the darkest areas that I see. This mirror has a little bit of red mixed into the brown because it absorbs and reflects colors just like almost anything else. That's why I mix some red into the browns. Try not to mix white into the red or blue paint for that matter because it's gonna look chalky and washed out. Um, the secret to making the red paint look brighter is to use the lightest red mixed into the red or you know you use the lightest blue mixed into the blue as opposed to adding white to the basic hue here you can see how i kept uh, the edge uh, straight by using the masking tape over the dry paint it doesn't lift out if the paint is dry completely and i worked on the right side of the canvas with the masking tape and now i'm lifting it out i'm using a wide a soft clean brush to brush uh, the paint gently uh, to smooth out the edges when the second layer is dry, I go uh, with the refinement of shapes in my third color layer. This is where I pay a much closer attention to subtle differences in tone. For instance, the right side of the cheek 
is in the shadow, but there are subtle differences in the tones in that area. This is where I'm trying to create those differences uh, in paint. And you know, sometimes I put a picture of my still life into this video for you to see, but you can tell that the photograph it looks super different from the original still life that I saw with my eyes. And that's the thing about painting from photographs. It doesn't represent a reality. You know, you see what you see and the pictures capture something else. When I paint the part of the face uh, as a reflection in the mirror, it's important to capture the right angle of the face to make it look believable. And also the value or the tone of the reflection seems to be lighter than the wall behind it. And that's what I'm thinking of when I keep painting the still life. Because the reflection needs to be super soft, I keep using the second clean brush to soften every edge. Otherwise, the image in the reflection is going to compete with the actual object. So I keep drawing the face with my brush and then softening the edge just a little bit. And of course, you do need to know the basic anatomy to paint with the brush without previous, you know, sketching on your canvas. And here we go, you can see me blending the face using a wide soft brush. I don't use it for painting, I keep it exclusively for this kind of uh, blending. And now I switch to painting the details in the flower. Again, when I paint the red flower, I don't use white paint. I can mix some brown or even black into the red if I need to deepen the shadows though. And to create realistic petals, you need to think of rotation uh, of each petal in space and how much light it catches because some of them look a lot darker and study uh, the curvature of each petal. And when I uh, paint the red candy wrapper, I use the same red but add uh, some gray into those reds. It has a slightly different uh, color, which is duller. And the lightest part of the candy has the brightest red. I usually use cadmium red light by Gamblin uh, to create the lightest and brightest lights in the red. Also, you do need to analyze the color temperature of the light because if the light is cool, your reds are gonna look cool and in reverse, if the light is warm, your reds are gonna look warmer and more yellowish. This section, I'm focusing on painting the box and there are two things I'm thinking about as I keep painting it. The first thing is the position of the box itself. To make it look realistic, I need to think of the correct perspective, um, keeping it intact as I keep uh, painting. So that means that the lines need to converge in imaginary uh, vanishing points on two sides of the box that I see. Also the edge in front of the box that we see that's close to us needs to be a lot sharper than other edges. You know, the shading itself is important. Uh, the edge that's close to us is a lot brighter and that's why I'm mixing more white into the basic color uh, to make it brighter and more definite as opposed to everything else in the box. I'm also thinking about the stroke direction to create the strokes that describe uh, the form 
and don't compete uh, with everything else in the picture. The golden yellow candy was fun to pink because it looks like a fun triangle with a lot of light at the top of the candy. I'm making the edges stronger in the reflection of the mirror. I'm also redefining some of the edges in the mirror itself thinking of the perspective because the line the mirror line needs to be parallel to the lines of of the wood and i've decided to strengthen the color and make the edges a lot more definite And now I'm going back to the box uh, to paint the letters on it. And I'm using a very small uh, zero liner brush to do that. What's incredibly difficult to do is to keep uh, thin lines very thin. And sometimes I paint with triple zero brush uh, to uh, create the line that I usually achieve very easily using a sharp colored pencil. Okay, and when this stage is complete, I let everything dry. And in this step, uh, you'll see me do some glazing because I want to unify certain areas and deepen uh, the shadows. I want to glaze this area to make it more reddish because of the red light. I've just glazed uh, the bottom part of the painting to make it darker and recede in space more. And finally, I'm going to paint super fine details in the still life and uh, paint uh, the tiara. Okay, before I begin glazing, I make sure that all the areas are super dry. If the paint is still sticky, I never paint over it. I wait for it to dry. Because basically, if you start painting over somewhat uh, wet paint, um, the layer underneath uh, isn't going to dry completely but the layer above it uh, is going to dry and that's one of the reasons why paintings crack um, because artists don't use um, this simple way of painting each layer must dry completely to, to glaze uh, any area properly You've got to study your colors. Some colors are more transparent than others. I usually use transparent uh, colors and then mix them with linseed oil to make a very thin glaze. So it's a very transparent mixture of uh, oil paint and some linseed oil. Uh, just remember that the more linseed oil you add, uh, the weaker the paint gets, so don't overdo it. Use just a little bit of oil to dilute your paint. If I see that it's too dark, I can wipe it off somewhat using the paper towel. Or if it's not dark enough, I can apply more paint over it. All these colors are reflected on shiny objects, and that's why... I add this thin glaze over the candy, for instance, and some of the edges close to the wall. If my brush is too small to spread the paint around, or it seems that I have a ton of paint there, I use the blue paper towel to wipe it off some or to spread it around some more. 
it's a very fine balance you learn these things by uh, trial and error the goal is to have some uh, paint uh, applied evenly over specific areas unifying some of the edges and dark areas together i usually have um, one or two or even three glazes applied at different times um, to deepen the color even more for instance if i paint a sash a blue sash i would be applying one glaze um, i would let it dry and apply the second glaze and the third and it deepens the color and makes it look very rich but you need to remember that it darkens the area by a lot so the more color you apply the darker it gets and you need to think about those things in advance i'm using the same uh, color glaze uh, applying it over uh, the shadows on the face and close to the edge on the neck overlapping the edges I'm adding a little bit of that color into the shadows on her hair and and so on because this entire area is in the shadow uh, I'm putting a little bit of bluish paint over this area and so it, it unifies uh, the shadow part of the face and makes it more of a clear separation between the light side of the face and the dark one you know i do some fine adjustments as i keep painting uh, with this glaze uh, to make it a touch darker or lighter in the specific area and as you can see um, each side of the face uh, has more unity in color because say one side is in the light so it's unified more in color and the same is true about the shadow side of the face and it's totally okay to um, add some detail into the glaze uh, while it's still wet this way it's easier to keep the edges soft there is a lot of orange red on this side of the face and that's why i'm putting it here i'm going to lighten it up some uh, ne painting next to this red orange also uh, when i think of the roundness of the shapes i look at the value on the edge and if we look at the back of the head it must not be uh, very bright because otherwise it's not gonna turn into the darkness and that's why i'm applying some color to darken that area after it's done i can uh, continue painting uh, the highlights on this side of the face as you can see i'm applying a thin glaze and then i'm wiping it off some to leave a very thin nice cast that is difficult to mix otherwise and I'm strengthening the light on the petals and I'm trying to separate uh, among all of them um, so the more light I put in on a very few petals the more they stick out and the rest of them recede in space and I usually step back from my painting quite often to see if I got the values or tones right uh, meaning that it should be dark enough or light enough uh, for it to work and it's super important to look at the painting from the distance because you lose all the details and you see uh, the values only
To paint the straight edges, I often rotate my canvas and then I keep painting it sideways or I have um, an up and down stroke. It's just a lot easier to keep a straight edge and that's parallel to the canvas. And as you can see, I'm not using the ruler, but I let my hand rest on a stick. This gives me a very precise and controlled movement. And then the second secret is to have a very good brush that doesn't fall apart and keeps its uh, point. And I prefer using the filbert brushes because I can rotate them and it gives me, uh, this kind of brush gives me a very straight and nice edge. Uh, by the way, because I keep rotating my canvas, I can see some little mistakes that pass by unnoticed if I'm painting at the, you know, as I'm supposed to paint. So keep rotating your canvas to see a little mistakes or unevenness. It's really helpful. I often rotate my canvas upside down uh, to check if everything looks correct because as soon as I do it, uh, I see a little uh, mistakes. The same happens when you take your art and look at it in the mirror. You see weird uh, shapes and what you need to do, you need to fix those strange shapes. That's how you bring your art to the next level and make it look more real. And so when I see some inconsistencies or weird shapes, I uh, try fixing them, um, painting upside down, making the lines straight or making the shapes not crooked <laughs> and stuff like that. As you can see, it's a lot of refinement. I don't overpaint everything completely when I add more layers. I just keep refining and uh, I'm trying to make the shapes as perfect as possible. And then I, I'm also trying to uh, make subtle variations within one specific form. And only after that, I begin adding teeny tiny details into the image. As you can see, I didn't sketch the key with my pencil. I just uh, sketched it uh, with the brush. And it takes uh, some patience uh, to learn how to control your brush uh, to make very thin, straight, nice lines. It is a skill. I place uh, the shadow um, behind the key and I also mark the highlights and that, that's how I think about every object. I look at the shape of the shadow, I look at the highlight and then I create transitions between the two poles. And finally I begin painting the tiara. Again, I don't sketch it with a pencil. I just uh, start painting uh, the basic shape using my brush. And, and I put the reflection in the mirror at the same time. Um, to do it correctly, I, uh, I'm thinking of the rotation of the object in space how wide or narrow those arches should be. And I'm trying not to make a mistake here because it becomes a little bit messy if I try to wipe it off. So the secret to doing it correctly is to let your layer dry and then put some linseed oil and wipe it off completely that makes the surface shiny and ready to paint over it because the paint glides on smoothly it's a lot easier to make the correct shape without uh, strange edges or um, thick lines 
Once I put in this basic uh, black uh, shape that has some brown and even red mixed in, into it, I uh, begin looking at the highlights and I'm adding sparkle into this tiara. This type of painting requires uh, precision uh, in the movement of my hand and I always use a stick to make this controlled movement. When I begin working on the texture of the tiara, I'm thinking what kind of stroke I need to make uh, to copy that texture and make it look uh, real. Is it an up and down stroke? Is it the stroke that goes sideways? Um, is it a long curvy stroke? This, this is something that I'm thinking about as I keep painting this object. Next, I re-establish uh, the darkest areas uh, that I see using my fine brush. As you can see, I keep uh, refining the shape, um, applying uh, varied strokes to describe every part of the tiara. I'm mostly using up and down strokes um, to fill in the texture and also I vary the color of the stroke because some of them need to be brighter while others need to be darker. If you noticed every uh, part of the tiara has two sides, one is light and another one is dark and I'm trying to repeat it uh, by mixing the correct value of my paint. So I keep painting the dark areas in the arches first and then I'll go back and I'll paint the lighter parts of the arches next. And then I just keep strengthening the lights, making them lighter using up and down stroke. I erase the value of the highlights that I see. And as you can see, I use a lot of color to describe uh, different values. Some of them are reddish while others are uh, grayish. So this comes from observation of the object in the light that I see in front of me. And I con constantly compare the value and color um, in my painting uh, to the values and colors that I see in the still life in front of me. Finally, I paint the letters on the chocolate bar. Once again, to make, it, to make the paint flow, you can um, use a little bit of linseed oil, uh, spread it around over the dry layer, wipe it out, and then paint the letters over it. Then I keep adding the reflections that I see. They are darker than the objects themselves, and the edges are very soft. And please uh, support this channel. Check, um, check out the links in the description of this video and use them to buy your supplies if you need them. And when I get to the final stage of my painting, I step back to see if I want to make uh, the highlights even brighter. Uh, when you look at the reference, the light is super bright on one side of the face and I can see that it's not bright enough in my painting, so I am re-establishing some of the highlights. So what I'm doing, I'm uh, putting the lighter paint over this area and then I carefully uh, blend the edge around it uh, to, you know, to blend it into the rest of my painting. 
This is not pure white paint. I still add some color to it, the color of the light um, to make a colorful highlight. So this part of the face receives the highest light. And I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope it helps you in your creative pursuits. If you have a question, you can leave it in the comments below. I'm trying to check uh, the comments and um, I wish you luck in your creative pursuits. Uh, take care. Bye-bye.